Way to go, Hotshot. You just blew the game. You wanna make something of it? Slime off, you creep. You better go over to the nurses and have her take a look at that mouth. Creep. Rusty, this is the third fight that you've been in this week. All right, back to the classroom. I'd like to see you after school tonight. You could be a top-notch ball player or anything else you wanted to do in life if you'd only go by the rules. But he started it. How? By running off at the mouth? Baseball is just like life. It takes a team effort. Nobody was ever cool by being mean and tough. We need each other. I don't. I don't need anybody. That's the way I used to feel, too. But deep inside, I wanted someone, someone who would really love me. And that was Jesus Christ. Can I go now?
Rusty, if you don't study for that quiz, you won't do very well. Why should I even try? Even when I do study, I don't do as well as you. You shouldn't compare yourself to me, Rusty. God made us all different, but he loves us all the same. Yeah, sure. He made me so different that nobody likes me at all. That's how different I am. No, Rusty, that's not true. The reason you act the way you do is because you are a sinner. Everybody is. That's why Jesus died on the cross. He took the punishment for our sins. He died for you. I don't get it. Look, Rusty. Remember those flashcards I showed you the other day? Well, this one is our card. That's dumb. What do you mean, our card? Well, my dad says that we're all just like the two thieves who were crucified with Jesus. We are on one side or the other. Either we ask Jesus to forgive us, like this thief did, or we just laugh at him and end up like this one. But you have to choose. Which one are you, Rusty? Neither. But Rusty! Oh, come on! Get off my back. My mom says there is no God, and people that believe in him are sissies. Here, I'm no sissy. We're going to see the principal about this. Kicked off the team. Dumb old game, dumb old principal, dumb old school. Who cares, anyways? I care, Rusty, and so does Jesus. He cares about all of us. Well, I don't care about him, and I don't care about you either. So why are you always bugging me? Because I like you, and I care about you. Well, I don't like you, and I don't like. I don't like that purse. Rusty! Oh, 
I'm sorry, Janie. I really do like you and your purrs. you're a sinner. Everybody is. That's why Jesus died on the cross. He took the punishment for our sins. He died for you. And remember, Rusty, Jesus loves you and wants to be your friend. And so do I. We're all just like the two thieves who were crucified with Jesus. We are on one side or the other. Either we ask Jesus to forgive us, or we just laugh at him. But you have to choose. Which one are you, Rusty? Jesus, Janie told me that you loved me and wanted to be my friend. I guess what Janie did for me to save my life is what you did when you died to take away my sins. Thank you, Jesus. Come into my heart and please help me to be like Janie. And please help her to get better. Rusty, the house, it looks so nice. What's got into you? Jesus, Mom, Jesus. Who are you going to beat up next time, bully? Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. 
bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Andy. Yeah? I stole your knife. I'm really sorry. That's all right. Thanks for giving it back. Yeah. Hey, hot shot. Too bad you're not up to bat. You'll get to bat again next year. Well, hello, Rusty. Hi, Mom. <coughs> Hi, Mom. Where's the new improved Rusty, huh? Where's all that love of the Lord I've been hearing about for the last two months? Oh, I don't know. I just can't seem to get along with Jerry. Jerry who? You know, the kid I've been telling you about who's always tripping me and cutting me down in front of all the other kids. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, I tell you, Rust, there's some people that only understand a good, swift sock in the nose. That's what your old man would have done. But the Bible's... Oh, the Bible, the Bible. That's all I ever hear from you anymore, the Bible. Now, okay, I know you've cleaned up your act a little bit. But enough's enough, you hear me? You're too good already. Listen, there are, are people that only understand cracks in the head. That's the only way you can get them to get your point. You understand me? Boy, if not, they're going to step all over you for as long as you live. Yeah. I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Here comes the strikeout, King. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. Turn to him the other also? Great, Mr. Jackson. Thanks for inviting me along. Looks like you've got something on your mind. Oh, it's nothing. Wouldn't be Jerry, would it? Yeah, how did you know? Just call it an educated guess. Do you want to talk about it? It's just that he's always picking on me. I try to be his friend, but it's just no use. 
Sometimes I just wish I could... Punch out his lights? Yeah. I could do it, you know. I've done it before. Before? Yeah, but that was before you met Jesus. What does the Bible have to say about people like Jerry? Turn the other cheek. But it's so hard. Nobody ever said it would be easy, Rusty. Nothing worthwhile ever is. But Jesus wants us to do things his way. And it works. It worked for him. It'll work for you, too. That's only part of what I owe you. Get up, hot shot. Come on, you punk. Get up. But Jerry, I haven't got anything against you. Come on. I'm sorry for all the bad things I've done to you in the past. You're gonna be a lot sorrier when I get through with you. Come on, hit me. What are you waiting for? I dare you. Shop. I'm sorry about all the hard times I've given you. That's okay, man. Good luck in the 220. Thanks. your wrist while well, I go chase your homer. <laughs> oh, hi, Mr. Jackson. Hi there, Jerry. I've been watching you guys for quite a while. Looks like Rusty's really turning into quite a hitter. Is he ever. Once he got his temper under control, he can really connect. It just took a little coaching. I wish you could play ball with us again. So do I. There is something we can do. I've just been asked to coach a little league team this summer, and I'm sure that I could use both of you. You mean with uniforms in the works? With uniforms in the works. All right. Wait till I tell Rusty. Hey, Jerry.
Okay, Rusty, you're the next batter up. Let's get on deck. Watch him, Rusty. He's thrown like a bullet today. I'll try, Mr. Jackson, but he's already struck me out twice and threw me out on first. You were safe at first. That was a bad call. Don't let it get you down. Just give him your best shot. Hang in there now, Rusty. Come on. Right! Oh, Rusty, you gotta hit it. What could be more beautiful than the mountains of Switzerland in the springtime? I want to tell you a story about three children who live in a village high in these mountains. You know, sometimes the Alps can surprise you. Icy winds and freezing rains appear and disappear without warning. Last night, three little puppies died in such a storm. And that's where our story begins.
Peter Heide Hans. We're too late. W what? Ticker's dead. Dead? Pneumonia's a bad thing, Peter. She was just too weak to hang on. And and her puppies? They were all out in the very bad storm in the wet and the cold. They all died, Peter. All except... It's Quigley! Mark Quigley! Why did ours have to die? We should be happy for Peter. I'm happy for him. You're a brave girl, Heidi. Me to untie him? Yeah. Yeah. So. God let all the other dogs die but his. Why? She was just too weak to hang on, Hans. And then the storm last night? I guess we wasted our time bringing that medicine. What about your wood carving lesson? Hans! God had no right to let my dog die. Peter, Heidi, Hans is leaving. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. Goodbye, my little one. Goodbye, Peter, and take it easy down the mountain. Run along. Thank you for the puppy. You're very welcome. What do you want? How come you didn't stay for your wood carving lesson? I didn't feel like it. Grandpa's a good teacher. Well, he's your grandfather, not mine. But he likes you. Yeah, he likes you, Hans. We're sorry about your puppy, but mine died too. You can play with Quigley anytime you like. You talk too much. What's gotten into you? You leave my brother alone. You can tell your father the next time he wants someone to walk you up the mountain, he can find someone else. That Hans is asking for a bloody nose. I don't think I'm big enough to do that. Not you, Peter. Me. <laughs> Look, there's Daddy! 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 Oh, two children aren't enough. Now I've got a dog on my hands. Hey, what have you got? Quigley. Is that your new dog, Quigley? Isn't he cute? <laughs> Whoa, Peter! <laughs> I don't like dogs. Never have. Here you go. <laughs> hey, Quigley. Quigley's such a cute dog. Mm -hmm. Time to wash up, Heidi. And tell Father and Peter it's time to come in and eat. And tie that dog outside. I do not want it begging at my kitchen table. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, Quigley. I suppose we're going to keep the dog. Please, Father. Dogs bring disease. So do people. <laughs> yes. Remember when Aunt Gretchen first came to stay with us? We all caught colds. 
I don't consider that one bit amusing. <clears throat> That's enough, children. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for all your love and kindness to us. Thank you for providing for all of our daily needs. Thank you now for this food. Bless it to our bodies, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. we say grace, I suggest we pray that the children's food stays on the table and off the floor. Oh, hello! What was that? What is it, Gretchen? <laughs> oh, it's that Hannibal! Get him out of here at once! You gotta go let the dog out, you know, gay. What shall we do, Father? Aunt Gretchen doesn't like Quigley, and Hans doesn't want to walk us up the mountain anymore. Maybe you are old enough to go up the mountain without Hans. But what about his wood carving lesson? Our school teacher thinks Hans should enter the wood carving contest this summer. Your grandfather has won many prizes for his carvings. He would be a great teacher. About what happened uh, at the table today, we should treat Aunt Gretchen with a little more kindness. She has been a great help since Mother died. Aunt Gretchen's a grump. But a nice grump. What do you want? I'm wondering, what's gotten into you? Nothing. Father said Peter and I can go up the mountain any time we want. Good for you. Are you going to enter the wood carving contest? It's none of your business. Grandfather misses you, Hans. Well, if I do enter, I sure don't need a Bible-reading old hermit to show me how to carve. He's not a Bible-reading old hermit. And you're nothing but a tomboy. So what? My puppy died too, but I'm not taking it out on anybody. Your grandfather let my dog die. That's not true. I can find another teacher. <laughs> We should pray for Hans. Okay, Heidi? Okay, I will. Good night, Heidi. Good night. I'll turn off the lights.
Jesus, I'd like you to help Hans take his hurt away and help him love Grandpa again. business. Grandfather misses you, Hans. Well, if I do enter, I sure don't need a Bible-reading old hermit to show me how to carve. He's not a Bible-reading old hermit. And you're nothing but a tomboy. So what? My puppy died too, but I'm not taking it out on anybody. Your grandfather let my dog die. That's not true. I can find another teacher. Come here every day. Good for you and Quigley. That Quigley sure is a cute pup. It'd be a shame if he fell over that cliff. Quigley, you won't fall, will you, boy? Mind if I hold him? Quigley, you go to hunt and be a good dog. See, he likes you, Hans.
right? Please, Hans, don't hurt Quigley, don't! Oh, poor Quigley, he's afraid of heights. Give me my gun! to say. Maybe you should go to bed. I thought he'd be better when he came home from the hospital. They've done their best. Peter is going to be fine. He has some deep scratches and bad bruises. I leave some medicine. And his legs? I don't think it's serious. What he needs now is rest. I've brought some crutches for him. Thank you, doctor. Please, Lord, make my brother well so he can walk again. I feel so bad about all that happened. Hans did a terrible thing to cause Quigley to die. I don't know what to do. Please help me. Heidi, what a pleasant surprise. I was just going down to see Peter. How is he? I don't know. But I hate Hans. No, 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 wait a minute. Hating Hans will not change what has happened. Quigley's dead. Peter can't walk. I hate him. Oh, Heidi. When you hate, it only ends up hurting you. Daddy said to pray for Hans. I prayed, and look what happened. But we can't stop praying for Hans now. Have you considered that the Lord can't answer your prayers for Peter until you have forgiven Hans? Instead of hating Hans, we need to go on praying for him. I can't pray for him. The only thing he'll understand is a punch in the face. Don't talk that way. I'm so sorry for what I've done to you. That's okay.
contest is only two weeks away, and you hardly touched your carving. I know. I talked to Heidi's father today and told him how sorry we are. Mom, I didn't mean for anyone to get hurt. Really, I didn't. Hans, what you did was just plain wrong. I know that. Where are you going? I don't know. I want to be alone. Hans? You seem quiet today. Oh, Grandfather, everybody thinks that because I'm a girl, I'm supposed to sit back and let people walk all over me. No one ever said anything of the sort. Well? Gentleness. Gentleness? Jesus was a man of gentleness. He taught gentleness, not weakness, mind you, but a gentleness of spirit and a gentleness in action, compassion. I've got compassion. Just let me punch Hans once in the nose. Heidi. I'm sorry, but that's the way I feel. Heidi. You received Jesus into your heart. I remember because you sat on my lap right here at my workbench. And you looked up at me. And in your eyes there was such wonderment and anticipation. And now, instead of handling this problem Jesus' way, you want to handle it in your own way. I'm sorry. I love you, Grandpa. Now, you better run along. Your dad and Aunt Gretchen will wonder where you are. And don't forget his way, gentleness. I won't. What are you doing here? I came to talk to your grandfather. For a girl, she really packs a punch. I guess I can't blame her. We haven't seen you for a long time. I know. I guess I came to say I'm sorry. And this? I was hoping we could pick up my lessons where we left off. You know something? I'm glad. Come on in, and we'll go back to the wood carving lessons. Good boy. That's great, Peter. But I think we're going to have to quit for today.
Heidi, I'm going to town. Want to go along? probably hear about this sooner or later. So here goes. I punched Tom's in the nose. Oh? After what he said about Grandfather and what he did to Peter and Quigley. Did you hurt him? Yes, I think so. Now do you feel better? No. That's why Jesus said, love even your enemies because hating them does not make us feel better hating only makes things worse well i prayed for him terrific on the one hand you pray for him and with the other you punch him in the nose didn't think of it that way as christians we need to forgive okay okay You know, Hans, our lives are like this carving. We stand before God like a rough piece of wood, just waiting for him to do something special with us. Here, let's work on the head. We'll use this chisel, and grasp it firmly, like that. Good. And when we take Jesus Christ into our hearts, his love fills us and shapes us and teaches us. God, the master carver, wants to shape you. He wants to smooth out the rough edges, only you'll have to let him. Because God's love, like the woodcarver's chisel, will shape you into something beautiful. God loves me that much? So much that he gave his only son, Jesus, who shed his blood and died on the cross so that your sins and my sins might be forgiven. And then he rose from the dead to give us new life. All we have to do is ask him for it. Thank you, Grandfather. Now, I want you to take this home and finish it there and pay special attention to the face. Yeah. Goodbye, Hans.
Time for the wood carving contest. You feel up to it? You bet. Okay. Breakfast in ten minutes. Heidi, time to get up. Dad, would it be okay if I went up to get Grandfather? Sure, if you'll be careful. Hans, I sure hope you win today. Me too. You seem quite different these last few days. I think maybe it's Jesus. Or? Every time Grandfather talks about Jesus, I feel happy inside. See you, Mom. See you. Oh, don't forget the cow. Oh, thank you. Good to see you again, uh, Hans. It's beautiful. <laughs> it was you who guided my hands. And very talented hands they are, too. Oh. A few weeks ago, these hands held a little puppy over a cliff and... I know. I know. Why, Grandfather, did I do such a terrible thing? When anger or hatred or jealousy controls our lives, there's no room for God's love. But when Jesus controls us, when he is shaping what we do... I want Jesus to control my life. But he can't control your life until you ask him to come in and forgive you of your sins. I want to do this too. Will you help me? Oh, Hans, of course I'll help you. Here, sit down. And I tell you what, why don't you just pray after me? Thank you that you gave your son Jesus. Thank you that you gave your son Jesus. To die on the cross for my sins. To die on the cross for my sins. I am sorry for the wrong I have done. I'm sorry for all the wrong I have done. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Come into my heart and be my savior. Come into my heart and be my savior. Also, please control my life and shape it into something good. Also, please control my life and shape it into something good. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. <sighs> <laughs> Now, you go down there and win that contest. <laughs> Grandfather! Hans, there's Heidi. Oh, no. No, no. Everything's going to be just fine. Heidi!
now. Run along, children, and God guide you. But what about you? Oh, I think I already know who the winner is. Don't we, Hans? <laughs> now, hurry up. Scoot, you two. Hurry up. When they came back up the mountain later that day, well, that's almost another story in itself. You see, I was right. Hans did win the contest, and you know what he did with the prize money? He bought a little dog and gave it to Peter. And Peter? Yes. God answered the prayers of the children. Peter recovered completely. And the three became very good friends. But their best friend was Jesus. Be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God has forgiven you. It was a good summer, the year TJ came out to visit us. Not too hot, not even all that muggy. TJ, he'd come out to visit us lots of times before. But this year, well, this year things were gonna be just a little bit different. Put away back here. Brackets, pads, ski pole. Man, TJ, what are you planning on doing with all this junk? Open up a sporting goods store? Figure six weeks in the sticks. He'd bring along some to kill the time. I mean, between fetching water and slopping the hogs. Oh, yeah? Well, get in the truck, <laughs> dude. Sure enough, y'all. What's word on your folks? Any change? Nah. Dad's starting to look for an apartment again. And Mom, she's still threatening to see some lawyer guy. Funny, they always seem like, well, you know, the perfect married couple or something. Yeah. They're pretty good at faking a lot of things. So, you, uh, are you still into BMX? Sure. Well, there's a race not too far from here tomorrow. Thought we'd go check it out. Sounds good.
what do we have here, Stanley? Ice cream? Boy, I sure could go for some ice cream. I bet we all could, couldn't we, guys? Yeah. Uh, but, but Brad? Some sort of problem, Stanley? Well, all I got is 50 cents. 50 cents? Stanley, I'm disappointed in you. But I suppose 50 cents is better than nothing. Right, guys? Yeah. Right. But, but it's all I got. <laughs> now, Stanley. Why don't you let him be? What do we have here, a Boy Scout? Look, the guy's not bothering you, so But Stanley likes buying us ice cream. Don't you, Stanley? Um, yeah. So why don't you just mind your own business? Unless, of course, you want some ice cream. Is that it? You want some ice cream, too? Look, I'm... Yeah, Brad. I think he does. Well, why didn't he say so? You want ice cream? Here, have some ice cream. How's this? No, no, that's too high. Move it down just a little bit. Better? No, no, that's too low. Up. Oh, well, how about right no. there? Crooked, crooked, crooked. Oh, okay. straight, straight, straight. Oh, I hear them? They're here? They're here. Get all the stuff in the book. We have a book. Just hang. I've got it. I've got it. I hope he likes it. I can't wait to see him here. Hold on. What do I do with these? Do something. What am I supposed to do with them? TJ, welcome back. Look at you. Hi. Where'd you get all that stuff? Oh, come on in. Where'd you grab all that? He's inside. We're getting something all fixed up for you. What do you see? It. You got everything, Peter? Yeah, sure. Wow. We figured we'd make a little home away from home. It's terrific. What do you think? Oh, I don't know, Grandpa. Looks a little high. Looks a little high. <laughs> <laughs> well, not anymore. <laughs> Boy, it's so nice here. It's so quiet, peaceful. Back home, Mom and Dad are probably at it again. Pretty bad, huh? The worst. And they don't give a rip about me, that's for sure. All they care about what makes them happy. Sounds like you got a little bit of a chip on your shoulder there, TJ. What do you know? Well, I know me. I know when Pop left, I was mad enough to take on the whole world. Well, before the change. Change? Yeah, something happened to me inside. You had an operation? No, it's, it's really got something to do with my heart. Your heart? But you're so young. <laughs> no, no, TJ, not like that. I became a Christian. Mom, too. So? Well, so now I have Jesus living inside me. No, really. You see, he's inside me. He's controlling my life. And with his help, I've, I've really been able to start caring about people, forgiving. You still don't see it, do you? Well, it's like that guy at the store today. That guy was a jerk. Well, of course he was. But aren't the jerks usually the ones who need the most help? 
I mean, don't they need the most understanding? Well, I'll think about it, TJ. If, if somebody does something bad to you, and then you do something back at them to try to get even with them, well, don't you see how that's like a vicious circle? You know, it keeps going round and round, and no one's ever gonna win. But with Jesus inside you, you can put a stop to all that. Because with Jesus inside, he can really help you forgive. Well, uh, it's worth thinking about, TJ. Really. Come on, that'd be my class. Riders, watch the light. <laughs> Down and gone, moto number 28, your 12 year old experts. So old one Hoffman slips a pedal on the start. It's Dash and Dan. Dan, leaders up top. Chris Kearns working in the number two spot. Greg Perry. Up top, it's Howard Davis with the lead. Hoffman, oh, we got two, three of them together back there in the pack. Oh, one making his move now down the freeway. Oh, one Hoffman moving up as they hit the tabletop, looking for that final turn. Sam Chris and Howard Davis down there dicing it out. They head down the back stretch for the killer. Kearns, your leader. Here comes all one now making his move. All one, all one coming home. Hoffman for the win. Hoffman, Kearns. And Davis, the way they crossed the finish line, Moto 28. Hey, nice work. No kidding. Because I used to race BMX up in Chicago, and you looked great. Yeah? Yeah. Well, you ain't seen nothing yet, dog face. You want some real racing, you should try old man Frederick's Enduro. What's that? The toughest race you'll ever see. And this year's first prize is a Honda XR80. And it's all mine. And enduro on BMX? Yeah, well, like I said, it takes some guts, so that leaves you out. Says who? I'll be there. 
Hey, I said I'd be there. Good, because I'm looking forward to dusting you all over the track. Oh, and Dogface, I still owe you one. And I'm like an elephant, I never forget. So, what's stopping you? I need a bike, Grandpa. Fiddlesticks, we can stop by any time and get a bike. What does a bike cost? 40, 50 bucks? 250. $250 for a bicycle? A BMX in, Alice. Oh, I'm sorry, TJ. That's a little out of our range right now. Yeah, I figured. I guess I just have to keep letting him call me a wimp. A wimp? Yeah. He calls my grandson a wimp? Now, Grandpa. Dog face, too. To the dog? <laughs> that settles it. We're buying the boy a bike. Grandpa. Tarnation girl, we can't let the family name get drugged through the mud. Man has to stand up and fight for his honor. Isn't that right, son? That's right. Good. That settles it. Now, how much did you say that was? Uh, $250? Mm-hmm. Well, I have something put aside. Well, uh, some of the guys make extra money over the summer by cutting firewood. Of course. Brilliant idea. <laughs> I wonder why I didn't think of it myself. Uh, we could all three of us go out and cut some cords of firewood. The three of us? Wood. What about me? Oh, you're just a girl. You're not too feminine. Fragile. Fragile. Yeah. Fragile. I'll treat no. you fragile. Hey, no, 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 Okay, Mom, come on. You can, uh, make the lunch. All right. Just like the three musketeers. All for one and one for all. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. hitting the branch here, boy. It's square now. You sure cutting down these trees is OK? Yeah, it's no problem, as long as they're dead. But how'd they die? I don't know. They probably got some disease or something. Like people do? Yeah, I guess so. You know, Jesus talked about that. About what? About disease. See, only he called it sin. He said that you, me, well, that we're all born with it. No matter how good we are, we all still have it. And the only way we can get rid of it is by asking him to come inside and forgive us. Jesus said that? Yeah. You see, he wants us to be strong and healthy, kind of like that tree over there. But if we're not, you see, if we haven't asked Jesus into our hearts, well, you know, like me and Mom did, well, when we stand before God, instead of spending an eternity with him in heaven, we'd only be fit for hell. Just dry, dead firewood. I got one more for you. Got him? Yeah, got him. <laughs> Truck right over there, boy. Right over there. Over here, sis. Over here, there's nothing there. We want an even load. Thank you. 
Oh, yeah. That's uh, just down the road about a quarter mile. That's great. Go see yourself a big gravel pit to your right. There it is. That one? Yeah. Thanks. Tim, let's go get you. To win, man. You can't take that from you. I haven't got a chance in the enduro. What's this? A brand new bicycle. Leave it alone. Where are the training wheels? Leave it alone. You should take better care of your equipment, dog face. I mean, like, it might get scratched or something. I said leave it alone. You want me to leave it alone? Okay. I'll leave it alone. Looks like you're getting that thing down pretty good. Yeah, I'm gonna be taking that for real low to beat that jerk. Don't tell me you're still holding a grudge. I hate that guy. Come on, TJ, you don't hate anyone. What happened to your eye? Take a guess. Brad did that to you? Yeah, I'm gonna make him sorry. Real sorry. You know, TJ, uh, hate's a pretty terrible thing, the way it 
eats into a guy and takes control. If you ask me, trying to forgive Brad might be the smarter move. After what he did to me? No way. Well, I didn't say it would be easy. In fact, without a little help from Jesus, I'd say it'd be pretty close to impossible. Listen, I'm sick and tired of being preached at and pushed around. I'm gonna get that jerk and I'm gonna get him good. Going. I'm going to find him. Where? We've called almost everyone we know. Don't worry, Mom. I'll find him. I'll find him. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you, uh, you get quite a few people worried about you. And a few that like to kill me. I've really messed things up, haven't I? Yeah, well, hate and bitterness. I mean, that could be mighty ugly stuff. But you know, it's, it's really no different from any other sin. The way it eats in and starts to destroy us. But how, how do you get rid of it? Well, I can only tell you how it worked for me. Jesus? Yeah. See, before, well, before I was kind of like this tree here 
all dried out, full of sin, just dead wood. But when I asked Jesus to come inside and forgive me, and when he took control of my life, then his life started to flow through me. And I started to become more like well, that tree over there, full of life. But if I do that, if I ask him to come inside, then I can't do the things I used to. I'll have to start doing what he says. Well, that's right. You see, you'd be putting him in charge. It's a big decision, TJ. The most important in your life. And no one can make it for you, but you. How do you do it? Well, it all starts with a simple prayer. Would you help me? It'd be my pleasure, old buddy. Come on. You, you know, the Bible says that God loved the world so much that he gave us his only son, and that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. You know, and it also says in 1 John, well, hold on a second, let me read it to you. Let me find it. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So as you pray with me now, you're actually gonna be asking Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, and not only to forgive you, but to come in and take complete control of your life. You sure you're ready for something like that? Okay, great. So why don't we pray, and well, just pray after me, okay? Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I can't run my own life anymore. I can't run my own life anymore. I know that I am a sinner. Yes, I know that I am a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross for me to cleanse me of my sins. I believe that you died on the cross for me to cleanse me for my sins. And now I ask you to forgive me for those sins. So now I ask you to forgive me for those sins. And to come into my heart and help me to live how you want me to. To come into my heart and help me live how you want me to. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. TJ. TJ. Yes? What about Brad? Who? Brad, the jerk. He, he got what he deserved. Didn't he? You don't expect me to try to fix things up. Do you? Now there's an idea. <laughs>
As you have received the Lord Jesus, so walk in him. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. If you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you for your sins. Hi. What are you doing here? Uh, I came by to... Dad, come here. Somebody wants to talk to you. Yes? Uh, I came by to say that I'm sorry for what I did to your bike and that I'll pay for whatever. You were trying to ace me out of the race. Brad, well, it didn't work. Brad, that's enough. Well, I'm not sorry for what you I did. You better be no, sorry. I said that's I... enough. What's your name, son? TJ. I'm new in town. Well, this took a lot of courage, TJ, and I appreciate that. Don't worry about the bike, though. It's already been taken care of. Oh. Uh... Well, the important thing is that you tried to fix things up, and that's what really counts. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Guess I'll see you a little later then. Bet you will, dog face. I'm gonna punch you. Up. All right, All right, folks, this is it for the Honda XR80. 1.8 miles of some tough, mean terrain. The riders are now getting into position, making last-minute adjustments. Better be careful, dog face. A lot of things can happen out there. Yeah. All right, now listen up. We'll have no pushing, shoving, or any unsportsmanlike conduct. Any reports of such activity will lead to immediate disqualification. Is that clear? Any questions? All right, then. Riders to your marks.
There they are. Number one and 57. It's a terrible thing, the way it can eat into a guy and take control. Forgive man when they sin against you. Your heavenly Father will also forgive you. They're still neck and neck, but 57 is in perfect position to go low on that final burn. With Jesus' help, you can forgive. Forgive him. Forgive him. This is incredible. 57 has given up his position. Number one now has the advantage. Thought for a minute he was going to do it. Good job, Brad. <coughs> nice race. <coughs> hey, great race, son. Beautiful. I'm proud of you. Hey, you too, TJ. Too bad about that berm. I guess you didn't know you had to keep it tight and low. We say, let's go take a look at that Honda. Hey, you did good. I'm sure you did. You did your best. That's what counts. Nice try, boy. Maybe next time. Nice try? That was terrific, TJ. What do you mean? I lost. Did you? <laughs> I didn't think so. You ask me, I think you're starting to learn what winning's all about. Hey, TJ. My dad said we could fire this baby up over in my place. Want to come? You bet. You're right there. Yep, that was one special summer when TJ visited us. Lots of changes. But the biggest change was inside TJ's heart. Because you see, whatever the future held, he knew he could face it. Because with Jesus as his Lord and Savior, he could do all things. With Jesus inside, he would continue to grow and mature, becoming everything God would want him to be.